of the Evansville Aces, champions of the Green Original. We are joined by head coach Wes Carroll, student athletes Mark Schallenberger and Max Hanman. Schallenberger was named to the all regional team. We'll start with an opening statement and then we'll have questions for our student athletes. What an uh, incredible experience uh, for our program and our team. Um, I just want to thank Greenville and East Carolina for putting on an unbelievable tournament uh, and being a, an awesome host. This, uh, this environment was uh, something we've never experienced before, and uh, it lived up to the hype, that is for sure. Uh, but our club, we, we showed our resiliency um, and really bouncing back uh, from yesterday's game. I knew we were going to give a great effort just because of the, uh, the type of character that we, we have uh, getting off the bus. So um, an unbelievable feeling, uh, a lot of emotion. Um, as we have kind of busted through some some barriers as a program and we're in uncharted waters and what we experienced and so um, just really proud of our club really proud that we represented the Missouri Valley Conference this will be back-to-back -back Missouri Valley Conference appearances and super regionals and I think we represented mid-major baseball very well Well, obviously the atmosphere is something we've never seen before, but when you get out there at the end of the day, it's just you versus them. And really knowing that my guys were behind me the whole time got me over the hump that the crowd was kind of giving me. And when you initially came into the game, was there, as the game went on, did you settle in a little, was it, you know, a little bit nervous to start and then you kind of settled in or? Um, I feel like a little bit just, trying to be too perfect right away. And then knowing that my stuff's good enough to get outs if I just pound the zone and <clears throat> attack and let the guys behind me make some plays like Ty and Mark and the entire field made all weekend. And how much confidence, even though the team was trailing, uh, did you know the offense being able to respond give you on the mound? Yeah, well, I know if I put up zeros, my offense is going to bang. and. Pretty much my goal is to stay get out of the field as quick as possible and let my guys go hit because I know they will and it did. And Mark, take me through that. Obviously, go ahead, go ahead home on the there. Yeah, well, um, it was the second time I faced Root today, and I think it was either the fourth or fifth for the weekend. So you kind of got a feel for his pitches. Um, it's it's clearly not the not the big ninety five stuff from Root that we were prepared for. So for him to go out there and compete, work his tail off with what he's got was really impressive, really admirable, just the whole weekend. But yeah, I, I faced him once already in the game, and it was one pitch, middle up, heater, got off the tar a little bit, but got a hit out of it. So then coming there again, thinking, all right, he's going to come at me with heaters again, right? Because kind of beat me with the one last one, even though I got a hit. So starts me with a changeup, kind of weirded me out. I didn't think he'd throw me changeups. And he went a heater off of that, and I was like, all right, well, if he threw the once, might throw it again. And he threw a changeup again, and he threw a bad one. He'd thrown good ones earlier to me, but threw a bad one, and I made him pet. So it's a good pitcher. You don't get a lot of chance to do that off a guy like Zach Root. So for me to capitalize when he gave me that, that shot to capitalize was, was obviously big. And how much energy did you know, the play on the mound kind of give you guys because you're were, you were down three and you guys kept getting shots? To get back right on offense, how big was that? I mean, it's huge because, I mean, the day before, you give up, was it 16 runs, 19 runs, something like that. It was a whole bunch of runs. So you're like, ah, oh, shoot, offense needs to bang today, right? And then Nick goes out there, Nick shoves, Nick gives up a cheap hit, gets him two runs, and then wheels kind of fall off. But he was doing, he did really well. And then Max came in right after him, did really well. Shane did really well. So just that continuity just gave us belief that it wasn't like, oh, we need 15 runs. It's no, we need to get the leadoff guy on. We need to get one run, get the momentum back, and the pitchers are going to hold it. And that was, all honesty, it was not the type of game I was expecting to see. I was expecting slugfest. I was ready for slugfest, wind blowing out, a bunch of ECU hitters who bang. So it was it was refreshing to see a 6-5 game, but it was <laughs> it, I, it's awesome. I just can't believe it. And uh, Max, seeing obviously Nick, what he's been through in the offseason, his recovery, seeing the guy ahead of you go out and give a solid few innings before you come in, you know, did that give you any confidence as well going out and seeing him shove it? I mean, absolutely. It's good to see one of your guys that you've spent all this time with and 
know what he's been through, compete and play the way he did. And for him to go out and give us those four plus innings were just remarkable and huge for us because we didn't really have that many arms left because we had a lot of guys we ran through. So for him to have a quality start was just huge. And seeing him do that especially was awesome. We'll go to Patrick. Um, and I guess for Mark, um, you know, Coach and all the different players have been up here. Just talked about playing with house money, playing loose. And that might kind of just be easy to say, but how were you guys able to actually embody that? Yeah, well, I think um, I think it all started with breaking down that barrier by winning the conference tournament because the whole season, our goal, I've said it before, is our goal is make a regional, make a regional because we haven't done that since 06, and it's however we get there, we get there, right? So we we get there, we win, we win that conference tournament, and now we're here, and it's like, wow, the season was a success already. And I know for a fact that East Carolina is not rolling into a regional like, oh, season's a success already. They want more. They're... You guys are clinging for Omaha. That's where you're going, right? So for us, we've already won. Pressure's off of us. We're playing baseball. We're enjoying this awesome atmosphere. We are, that's what we said. It's like, take it in, man. It's stay present because these are memories happening in front of you. But at the same time, there's plenty of time for them to be memories. Like we're still going. The ship ain't sunk yet. So we're still going. So we're going we're gonna to keep doing it, but we're going to keep that same freedom of, hey, man, look at this successful season we already have. And we're going to go – are we playing Knoxville for sure? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go into Knoxville, and it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be, man, we got to get to Omaha. We got to get to Omaha. And we're like, we're at Super Regional. And we're going to keep having fun with it. We're going to keep playing inning by inning, pitch by pitch. And that's, that's how you shock teams is by staying present and going one pitch at a time and not letting it, not letting it become bigger than it is. Cause it's really easy in an atmosphere like this to make it bigger than it is with 5,500 people yelling at you. So for us to accomplish it is, is unbelievable. And I just – so happy that we did it. And Mark, obviously being here for a few years, seeing where the program was and where it is now, has that kind of sunk in for you yet? No, no, it won't. It won't sink in until I hang up the cleats, if I'm being honest. But just for for the fact that I, I committed to this school in the winter of 2018, okay, December-ish of 2018, and they were going into the 2019 season. And so the last season on record when I committed to come to the school was 12 and 38, <clears throat> 3 and 18 in the Valley, which is obviously a far cry from us going to a super regional. So that's, that's five years of work. That's five years of dedication. That's five years of seniors sticking it out, knowing that it's getting better and that they just keep putting in their little part. It's going to keep getting better. So it's, it's a group of 11 seniors. It's a group of young guys who are contributing to what we've already built. So... For it to culminate in it, I've been saying, for it to culminate in a regional is awesome. For it to culminate in a super regional is unbelievable. And just the idea that we even have a chance to go to Omaha is unbelievable. So we're going to keep playing the exact free type of baseball that we've been playing. And maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But we're going to have a whole lot of fun with it. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right. Mark and Max, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we'll finish up with questions for our coach. Some weird things. Keep it to three or less. Keep it to three or less. And it didn't look like we we're going to keep it to three or less when we threw the wild pitch, you know. And, and that's why Max Hand's been stepping up so big and minimizing that moment. Um, I thought the what could have been the turning point in the game of Riley Johnson's hit and run, you go first and third, that wrecks havoc. That opens up potential for a big inning with um, a really tight zone back there, a tough zone. And them to be base loaded and only give up three. Um, that was a turning point as far as our dugout relaxing, right? As you're waiting for ECU to have their big inning and and go up five, you know, seven runs. I think that it just showed um, Max Hans been delivering when we needed to. There's a strange play in that inning, right? That we kind of got a double play that helped us. Don't know if the ball hit the dirt. Don't know if it was caught. Simon was very, very confused, didn't get a call on the field, and was just trying to react. And so um, some things just have to go your way a little bit. And I think a play like that kind of went our way to be able to get two. That was that inning, right? I think, yeah, okay. I'm exhausted. <laughs> and Wes, did you expect this type of game going into it being kind of low scoring, turn to a little bit of pitcher's dull at the end? Once again, thanks for coming. I mean, Coming all the way from Evansville, bringing this um, back home. Um, I didn't know what to expect. 
I knew I knew it was going to mean a lot to me to show up today. It was going to mean a lot of our players came to the field with a will to compete and a belief that we were going to win. Calling Nick Smith last night because I couldn't find him. To tell him he had the ball, it was really emotional for me. That was a, a career moment. Nick Smith's done so much for us. Uh, I, and I'm not talking about just on the field, but as a culture builder and being that grandpa dad figure to our program over the last couple of years, giving him the ball uh, meant a lot to me. And I, I knew he was going to give us um, an unbelievable effort, and that's what he did. He really did. So I knew we were going to have to swing the bats. And, you know, we, we try to apply some pressure in certain points, and boy, you know, do they kind of shut it down. We had the enormous mistake on the bases with Mark Schallenberger up. Um, and to overcome that was uh, really challenging, but we did. We did. And obviously, giving Nick the ball after, you know, the off-season surgery that he went through and kind of this season, well, what was that moment like? What went into that decision to put Nick on the mound after all he's been through? Not a lot of other options, but he was – we knew he was going to be ready. He didn't throw in the conference tournament, and so we knew he was going to be fresh, but also I just knew he, he had the mindset to be able to handle just the last ride if it was with his guys. And, you know, we went with the freshman yesterday. Going into that game is so tricky because of the position that you're in. You know, we feel like we're a quality club. It's going to be tough to beat twice. And so as you teeter-totter, we talked about it last night, Nick Smith was our guy today, um, and he, he gave us an, uh, a wonderful opportunity. And when you look back at where this program was when this group of seniors came through, what, what's it like looking back at now with what you guys have accomplished with that group? Um, it's, it's incredible. It is. Um, with these guys, we've talked about it a lot. But the fact that they represented their university on this type of stage and wore Aces script across their chest with pride is something that I'll always remember. Um, it's instilled a culture within our program that's going to hopefully benefit for future for the future. Um, but what an incredible group of young men who believed in one another, believed in something bigger than themselves, stayed together, um, and to be able to experience this moment is something I will always cherish for sure. I'm very fortunate to have. Uh, a supportive president and President Petroskevich and our athletic director Ziggy Sigfried has uh, got a shot of adrenaline within our program and the support that we have. There's a reason why we've taken steps over the last couple of years and a lot of people behind the scenes, facility upgrades. Um, we're going to continue with facility upgrades as we're put ourselves in a position to compete in the Missouri Valley Conference year in and year out. <clears throat> and, and I think mid-major baseball uh, is in good hands with what's kind of happening in college baseball right now from the standpoint of Major League Baseball going to 20 rounds in the draft, I think has really helped uh, mid-majors and college baseball. And I think we're in a special place. And uh, I'm just glad that we've kind of dug ourselves out of a hole from 2017-18 uh, to have this type of experience is something. Um, trying not to get too emotional with it because I don't want to become a Jordan meme, but um, just uh, uh, couldn't be more proud. Couldn't be more proud and our fans to come all this way and, and have that little sliver up there in the stadium uh, chanting aces, aces just meant a lot. And walking out of the press conference last night, you were, even though that game last night didn't go the way you guys wanted, you were very enthusiastic even after that. You know, playing with that house money, what goes into obviously keeping that type of mental state and then conveying it to the team and letting them play? Yeah, I knew we were in a good spot. I knew we had a couple bullets. I knew Max Hansman was fresh. I knew Nick Smith was going to give us a great effort. And, and having uh, Jacob Meyer um, really didn't know Shane Harris was going to be hot and available until about five minutes before the game, and that made me happy. But that kind of – I also thought Deverman might have been hot, and he wasn't. So just, um, you know, I felt good about our group. I mean, like I said, if it was our last ride coming to the yard one last time uh, with these seniors that mean uh, so much to one another in this program and everything, uh, we were going to let it fly and let it rip. I, I, we did have a little more intensity getting off the bus. You know, uh, we, we, we were focused, and we, we knew uh, we were going to have to perform in front of a hostile environment. 
history. You know, what's it like for you at being the coach all these years and getting this done? Well, not just coach, but alumni, a player. Uh, you know, my brother stepped foot on campus in 1994. I followed him 98 to 01 as a player for Coach Jim Brownlee, um, who's here, which meant a lot to me. Jim Brownlee was here. He built this program from scratch. Um, and being fortunate to come back at the age of 28, John Stanley hiring me, taking a chance on a 28 year old that just bled purple. And I believed in this place. And, you know, 16 years in, it's been a journey. Um, one, has been jo so joyful just because of the people that I've been able to be around and, and work with. Um, but over the past five or six years, I really struck gold with some people that cared about me, cared about our baseball program. Um, and and we, we started to build something. We started to get people to believe in a vision and have the facility enhancements and upgrades in German American Bank Field, um, the Mike Krantz Family Field House, and then now Kyle Freeland really stepping up. Uh, it's little things like that that uh, go a long way into providing a great student athlete experience and recruiting prospective student athletes and then going out there and being able to perform and develop in our system. That's something I'm really proud of. So, um, you know, I feel like we still have a lot of years and great years ahead of us, and the future is going to be bright for Aces Baseball. Thank you.